Welcome to this episode of Know Your Ship. Today we'll be talking about the Brigantine, better known as the Brig. The fastest ship at sea, only challenged by the Galleon with backwind. A Brigantine should be controlled by three pirates. I know the menu says two to three persons, but if you're only two people, you're much better off on the sloop. Before we dive deeper into details, let's have a quick overview. This vessel sits low in the water, accompanied with two masts, four cannons, and two harpoons. The ship is narrow but long, divided into two decks. Bottom deck, which most important called cannonballs, wood, food, and grog. Down there we also have the map table, water barrel, cooking pans, wardrobe, and captain's table. The top deck, most importantly, contains a wheel, masts, cannons, anchor, and harpoons. Now I want to address some of the strong and weak sides of the Brigantine. Strong sides. As I said earlier, with the correct sail management, this is the fastest ship at sea. It is fairly easy to grab a bucket on this ship due to how close it is to both the helm and the cannons. If you lose one mast, you can still move while you try to repair it. When firing cannons, the length and position in the water makes it more stable. Cannon robots are easy, accessible and makes it into a baby galley. I'm gonna show you more of that later. Weak sides. The sails are big and easy to hit, getting the masted on the brig can be brutal. Because it's only have one deck that fills up with water, if not taken care of, it sinks pretty fast. The length of the ship make it hard to get the front part patch during a fight. The map table is far away from the helm, but you can see it through the front grid. The barrels are far away from the top deck, where you actually need them. That's why you always should have a storage crate placed in the middle of the cannons. Now let's check out the speed of this vessel. The Brigantine moves at the speed of approximately 60 seconds per square face wind. 45 seconds with back wind and 40 seconds with side wind. For all this to happen, you should consistently work your sail manager. Having teammates who angle sails accordingly will save you a lot of time. Racing back and front sail will take you the same amount of time. 10 seconds if you do it alone. And 3 seconds with the teammates. Now I think it's time to talk about some naval combat. When approaching an enemy ship, you should always prepare the left side. This due to the back sail always fall to the right and will block the vision for the cannoneers. As a bonus, this will also ensure that the grog barrel survives the broadside. Even though hourglass is not your plan, you never know when you end up in a fight. Just have a minor responsibility divided throughout the crew. This is how I would set up a crew. First off, we have the helm. Keeps the angle and patches wheel. Patches back sail. Do buckets. Revive teammates. Normal patches and shoot cannons if all above is okay. And then we have the main cannoneer. Main job is to fire cannons and shoot as much as you can on the enemy ship. Then board and wipe out enemy pirates. Last but not least, we have the flex. Patches the front sail. Fires cannons, bucket and repair if needed, becomes the helm if the helm is dead, which means responsibility for angle and buckets. Now I want to address something that is common for all the ship types, and that is the different kind of sounds we get. It's important to learn this to know how to respond fast. This is the sound of a cannibal hitting the hull, hitting the wheel. Mast and the anchor. But the most important sound is to listen for boarding pirates. All that said, let's talk about the damage the ship can take. The mast can take damage three times from a cannonball. The first damage will always be on the right side. Next is the left and last is the front. When you try to patch, you should always use the environment as cover. Chain shots will break it immediately. The wheel 
can take damage in three places, bottom, left and right. Patching the wheel is always a first priority and it should always be pristine. The brigantine can take a total of 18 holes, which is the same as the sloop, but remember, all these holes is on the same deck. Bucketing from the stairs is quick and easy, but since the ship is so long, you can in some occasion find it helpful to bucket out of the front grid. Line up the top of your bucket like this and throw out the water. This may take some practice. Since the brigantine moves so fast, it can be handy to use the harpoons for a quick turn or break. Without forgetting stealing and I'm gonna yeah. harpoon them. One of them. He's on our boat now. Killed him. I'm gonna nice. harpoon the other one. I missed. I got him. <laughs> There's Bye. no one on board. <laughs> <laughs> Having a cannon robot docked to the back of your ship can turn it into a baby galleon. This cannon could easily be used by the helm, but remember, only when all other tasks are okay. The stock cannons will lose angle way before the cannon robot, so remember to communicate with your team. This robot will also work as a shield for the back. The Brigantine is the fastest ship to board due to the small ladder on the side. If you're able to board on a high wave, you'll be on in no time. That's why it's important for the helmsman and the flex to look for borders and guard ladders. When you're guarding, do not stand on top of the ladder. The chances of being ladder shot or sniped from the water or just spotted in general are huge. I recommend standing here and then move closer when you know which side the border is climbing. Remember to listen for sounds. Finally, I'm going to show you some of the most common tucking spots on the brig. Could come in handy if you find out you have a stowaway on board. If you liked this kind of video, be sure to subscribe for more. Leave a comment on what tip you found most handy. And as always guys, thank you for watching.